Now, intangible assets might be something like your goodwill, your patents, your copyright. When you are going to invent something, when you are going to spend money on research and development, you need to understand what is the cost that is involved there. If the asset is acquired separately, it shall be recognized at the acquisition cost only. The usefulness of that asset is coming down automatically. It has to be discarded and the value has to be written off. Good morning and welcome to the session 2 of unit 3 of in international financial reporting standards where we are going to speak about the intangible assets we are going to now speak about the inventories so there is a lot of standards that are involved in this where we're going to speak about the Indian accounting standard 38 and the Indian accounting standard 2 which is very very important in terms of recording these functions Moving forward, let's try to understand the objective of AS 38, Accounting Standard 38 of Indian Accounting Standard is to prescribe the treatment for intangible assets that are not dealt with specifically any other Indian Accounting Standard. So what are we now trying to do is that we are now going to come into the standard where we are going to speak about the factor called as the Indian Accounting Standard 38, which is going to talk about the treatment of intangible assets. We have spoken about tangible. When we speak about property, land, plant, machinery, there is a Accounting Standard 16 that comes. But when we are talking about Indian Accounting Standard 38, then it is to be specifically in a different format and not with any other accounting standard. The standard requires an entity to recognize an intangible asset. Now, intangible assets might be something like your goodwill, your patents, your copyrights, all those factors if and only certain criteria are met. So, we are very specific. We don't want to give out that intangible assets just like that. But this is because of the certain criteria that are being met. Then we are bringing this into picture. The standard also specifies how to measure the carrying amount of intangible assets that requires certain disclosures regarding the intangible assets. So this becomes very, very important for each one of us to understand, to measure and to find out how we are going to apply it. The scope here is that the Indian Accounting Standard 38 applies only to intangible other than financial assets which is very very important here and any similar resources of intangible errors arising from the insurance or from any other point of view which cannot be considered otherwise into the financial aspect because financially when you speak about plant, machinery, land or any other kind of equipment, these are all something which can be tangibly measured, uh, you know, in terms of factors saying like the fair value, the retrieval values and all together. But here, when we talk about intangibles, they have a different phenomenon altogether in terms of recording their value. So it is very, very important for each one of us to understand and take the combination here. Now, moving forward, what is the definition that we are going to speak? An indefinitable or non-monetary asset without any physical substance controlled by the NTT. Now, that is very, very important from which the future economic benefits are expected to flow. There are many companies in this world who work a lot towards the patents, the trademarks are dry. Now, if you look into the company called Intel, Texas Instruments, there are many companies like this who spend a lot of time and money in innovation, applying their brain in order to derive a future technology that can drive the economic benefits to the organization. Now, all those things cannot be recorded. All those things cannot be easily set. So that's why what happens is that we record the entity, we try to understand and we bring in a recognition criteria altogether. Now, what is that recognition criteria? It says that the Indian Accounting Standard 38 requires the entity to recognize it as an intangible factor when purchased. So whenever you are going to get into 
it or self-created. Now that's very clear. Why? Because I have invented it. I have the patent. I have the trademarks rights on it. And is it prob probable that the future economic benefits that are attributable to the asset will flow with the entity and the cost of the asset can be measured reliably. So very, very important here. If an intangible item, that is, does not mean the definition or criteria of recognition of the intangible asset factor. Why? Because sometimes you might see that that's not exactly a patent or right it might be just an innovation which is not being traded at all so when it comes to the innovation factor altogether it is very very important here that we understand the value then we record it accordingly stating that this is where it has been told so once you have understood analyzed it and then accepted it as an intangible asset we will immediately apply the indian accounting standard 38 this also requires the expenditure on the item to be recognized. That's very, very important when it is occurred. So there is a lot of cost that might be involved in innovation, in invention and understanding the factors here. So it is very important for each one of us if to be recorded in terms what is the cost that is incurred because when you are going to invent something when you are going to spend money on research and development you need to understand what is the cost that is involved there if the asset is acquired separately it shall be recognized at the acquisition cost only if the asset is acquired in a business combination or through a government grant now you are going to get a government grant altogether then the recognition should be at the fair value of the asset why because that's a grant that's an external factor that's coming in into picture if the asset is generated internally the company itself has spent a lot of money on r d and then they have developed the asset then the expenditure incurred in each and every development phase has to be done through the recognition value that is why organizations like isro nasa and all when they get into the accounting standards when they try to understand the accounting methodology altogether they would have first tried to understand the fair value because most of the things are being done internally they generate the value at each and every given phase and they take the time in terms of recording each and every event that has been going through their organization followed by the recognition factor so how do you recognize it it says that it requires an entity to recognize an intangible asset which is purchased or self-created only if let's look into it it is probable that the future economic benefits are attributable only in future now let's say that isro comes up with a technology or nasa comes up with a technology that's going to say in next 10 years that is going to be the equipment or technology to measure the weather predictions that is going to be the technology through which we can understand the atmospheric pressure so something that is going to derive the economic value for the organization then we are going to get into that standard and now what is going to happen here is that the end 38 that is the indian accounting standard 38 requires the expenditure on the item to be recognized as an expense so when it comes to isro it is very very clear that they will tell it that what cost it can be acquired and at what rate it is going to be acquired so this becomes a very very important factor for each one of us to understand and take forward if the asset is acquired in a business combination suppose you're going to acquire it on a business combination through a government grant altogether then the recognition shall be at the fair value of the asset that's what it is going to be generated altogether if it is being generated internally please understand this factor if the asset is generated internally then the expenditure incurred in development phase shall be in the recognition value so moment it's going to be generated it's going to be done in the recognition value itself followed by the effects of revaluation. So the increase in carrying amount to the extent of previous revaluation will decrease the recognized profit and loss account in the balance and the revaluation to other comprehensive income statements altogether. So it becomes very important for each one of us here to understand the values of the recognition at any given point of time. Now what is happening here is that whenever we are trying to understand the 
asset is increasing that's the intangibility factor is increasing automatically it becomes very very important for each one of us at that juncture to again go for a revaluation and find what is the true value now if for example if the revaluation is going to decrease then that is the time it has to be recognized in profit and loss or else it remains as an asset altogether the decreasing amount is carrying amount to the extent of previous revaluation it shall increase to be recognized with other comprehensive income and the balance amount of revaluation to the profit and loss so what is going to happen the decreased amount to the extent of the previous revaluation so the last year if it was 1000 rupees and this year it has become 500 rupees so the difference 500 is going to be recognized to the other comprehensive income as we have spoken before the balance that is the remaining 500 rupees will be carried on towards the profit and loss account now moving forward amortization and impairment suppose in case of finite useful life forever it's going to come intangible assets should be amortized over their useful life period their usability life period that has to be looked into and the test for impairment should be done when there is an indication wherever there is an indication stating that this is the challenge this is the factor this is what needs to be done in case of indefinite useful lives coming into picture the test for impairment should be made annually and whenever there is an indication that the intangible asset may be impaired so whenever you feel that the asset is not going to generate any future value any growth or any kind of usefulness altogether that will be impaired and that has to be given back so the indication stating that the usefulness of that asset is coming down automatically it has to be discarded and the value has to be written off now the next thing is disclosure requirement so for each of these assets disclosure is very very important why it is important because for each class of tangible asset disclose the useful life amortization rate method of gross carrying amount accumulated amortization impairment of loss and lines the income statement which the amortization is included it is very very important for any organization in this country especially in India that they have to write down what is the useful life or the amortization rate including the gross carrying amount accumulated value impairment losses in items and the income statement in which the amortization has been done so these are all the factors under which it has been included and it has been taken into account altogether with this I come to the end of the session I hope and believe that this session was of great resource and help to you. In the upcoming sessions, we will be talking more about the accounting standards in terms of the valuation of assets and liabilities and carrying forward in the shareholder payment and other factors. Until then, stay tuned, stay blessed and stay enlightened forever. Thank you once again for joining me today on this wonderful session.